In this video, we are going to cover a lot about Playwright. We are going to put an introduction like why exactly it is required, the installation of it, how to run the test, how to generate report. We need to tell Playwright tool that under which folder we want to keep our test. Let us inspect the project scaffolding and see like what and all we got. The file that I'm more interested in right now is called playwright.config.j. Let us learn how to run this test, right? So that when we write our own test, we will be able to run them as well at that time following the same footstep. The locator that I'm going to use right now, it's called get by role. Okay. You not only can run the test that you write, but you can actually write your test by recording the action on a web page. Hey, this is Tapas. How are you doing today? I am a demand stack or full stack developer who's been coding for last 20 years. A YouTuber, a teacher. I teach on my YouTube channel called Tapas Script. And I'm also an author on Free Code Camp, has published a few handbooks over there along with articles on technologies. I also have my blog for last four years. I have been writing very actively. My blog name is Green Roots. You can check it out. And I'm also managing an open source community called React Play. It's quite established where we do online, offline meetups and activities. You can check that out. And very recently, I have founded my own startup called Creoways. So all the links are there. If you're interested in my work, you can always check it out and we can always connect anytime. In this video, we are going to cover a lot about Playwright. We are going to put an introduction like why exactly it is required, the installation of it, how to run the test, how to generate report. We will also write a few tests and we'll show you in action. We're also going to show you how to configure Playwright. At the end, I am also going to show you how can you run Playwright test on the cloud infrastructure using Lambda test. I'm sure you're excited for this. So let us get started with an introduction of Playwright. Playwright is a tool that was created for the end-to-end -end testing purpose. Playwright not only supports JavaScript environment, but also works with Python, Java, .NET. It supports all the modern rendering engines like Chrome, Firefox, WebKit, all of them. And you can perform your testing on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, or even locally, right? So this is a great tool that we are going to experience today. And the first thing that we're going to get started is the installation of Playwright. As we'll be installing Playwright with JavaScript, we will have dependencies on Node. So make sure that you have Node.js installed. In case you don't know if the Node.js is installed or not, you open the command prompt and then give the command node space hyphen v and this will tell you the Node.js version if it is installed. If it is not installed, you go to nodejs.org download node.js and install that that's the first step once you have that then we are going to execute a few command that will start creating the playwright project for us for that go to any of the folder of your choice and then start executing these commands so the command that we are going to try is npm init playwright at latest here we are initializing the playwright project using the latest version of the playwright npm and we press enter it will ask you a few questions like you want to initialize the project with typescript or javascript we will go for javascript and where do you want to put your end-to-end -end test as we explained the playwright tool is for writing end-to-end -end test so we need to tell playwright tool that under which folder we want to keep our test you can name the folder called test or as it is for end-to-end -end test you can name it as e2e i'll go with the name called e2e add a github actions workflow no at this point we don't want so we'll go with false install playwright browsers yes we'll go with this and this is going to initialize the playwright project going to take some time and then it's going to get done with it that's it now if i do ls i'm going to see a bunch of files got created and the folders the one of the folder that we can note is e2e there is a package.json that is there as a descriptor file for all the node projects, which contains all the dependencies and all this information. And then it also created some example tests that we are going to see and a very important file called playwright.config.js. That's what we are going to look into right away. But before that, I'm going to import this project into my favorite code editor called VS Code. And we'll start looking into things from there. Let us inspect the project scaffolding and see like what and all we got. So we got one E2E folder and inside that there is a example spec file, example test file. Okay, here I have to speak about dot spec file. 
the dot spec file are the one under which we'll be writing our test this is what is coming as an example we can follow this to learn something but we'll be learning some of the test writing from the scratch so i'll ignore this for a moment and then we also have few more text examples that are over here we can take a look at it but again we'll be writing our own test in a moment so it's fine just hold on for that the file that i'm more interested in right now is called playwright.config.js let us go inside that and try to understand what is there in this particular file so as we see like there are a bunch of configurations out there one of the configuration we already spoke about where the tests should reside the dot spec files that should be inside e2e should we run the test in parallel we have given as true the bunch of configurations are there related to continuous integrations and then in what format we want to get the reports it says html and then there is a use object under this you can do various configuration one of the configuration that is on at this point of time is called trace this is on by default with on first retry this is through which trace we say collect trace when retrying the failed test right how the behavior should be and then below this is where you define under which environments you want to run your projects so for example you want to run the projects on chromium environment means on google chrome on firefox on webkit like safari and this is what you define over here if you want your test to run only on one of this you can very well comment out or remove the other environments if you don't want to right so this is where you have it and there are a bunch of other configurations as well that you can start looking into from this documentation of playwright which is playwright.dev slash doc slash test configuration a lot of definitions about each of these configurations that just now we spoke and there are other configuration that you may need as we already have an example spec file that means there are certain tests already there so let us learn how to run this test right so that when we write our own test we will be able to run them as well at that time following the same footstep so for that we'll do npx the command i have opened the command prompt inside the visual studio code itself you can do it from your terminal as well playwright paste test so it's running six tests using five workers and as you see the test has run of course there are certain failures that we can see over here let's not mind them at this point of time but see what happened basically the test has run some of the test got failed some of the test got passed there are there is one fail and five passed and after the test running i'm also getting a beautiful test report which looks like this which has the details of the test fail a test got passed and if i click on it i can go ahead and start looking into the details of it like why exactly it failed and what is the reason for example there is an error with page.go to we will look into each of this like page.go to what it is and why this particular test might fail when we write our own test and then if we go back we can also see like in other environment in this case it is firefox in this case it is webkit or safari these are the things what passed what failed there is also the numbers that signify like you know how many tests got run how many passed how many failed everything that you can see the generated report will be under this playwright hyphen report folder you should be able to see the generated report over here anytime you want to look into it later point in time if you want to run this report without the test cycle you can go ahead and try this command call npx playwright show report this is going to run the report again on this particular port 9323 by default on localhost you can view this report again as well so now i'm going to introduce you to another awesome thing is called this vs code extension for playwright i think once you learn and get used to this particular extension you won't be using any of the terminal or the command prompt you will be running most of your test configuring things from the vs code itself so it is good one way that within one tool you can perform everything so go to this marketplace url again this particular url is also there in the description of this video so you can go ahead and click on this install if you have vs code install it will automatically install this plugin on top of vs code which i have already installed so if i go to my vs code i'll be able to see a testing feature over here if i come to testing the beautiful part over here is like it has already recognized like where my test cases are in the e2e folder as you remember if i expand there is an example test already there if i expand inside that there are two tests written those two tests are also i can see in the hierarchy either you can run all of them from over here using this play button 
or you can selectively run each of these tests using this play button over here. You can also debug this test. So for example, you can put a breakpoint and debug this test to figure out like if there is something wrong in the test that you have written. So let us proceed again with the example test that we have and try to run it. If you see at the bottom, here you have selected the project called Chromium. That means this test will run only on the Chrome browser. But if I select Firefox and the WebKit as well, it is going to run on all the three browsers. So let me go ahead and start this particular test, for example. So we'll do run test is going to run now. It's running, it's, it's finished is running. This is the Firefox. This is the Safari. So everything has run. And you see over here that three passed. On all the three environments, this test has passed. So we are able to see this particular green tick over there, right? So this is how you can actually run the things directly from your VS Code extension. You don't have to go out of it. There are a few other settings available. For example, you have something called Show Trace Viewer. If I do this and try to run this once more, and this time I'm going to run only on Chrome, and I'm going to run this one again. So you have this particular UI open. This is from Playwright itself. And on this UI, you are going to get to many of the things that you can use for your further debugging. So for example, you can look into different kinds of settings. You can look into whether there is a log, there are errors, what are the network calls being made, everything locally in this particular user interface itself. So use this if you want to get into more details about your test run or the after fact of your test run where you want to deep dive into different aspect of your run and figure out like why certain things happen in certain ways or is there a way that I want to fix something, right? That's, that's the purpose. Now I'm going to close this. I'm going to uncheck this one. And I'm going to quickly show you by clicking on this debug thing. Let's go ahead to my example spec and over here let me put a debug point all right now you can run the test even from here that's the beauty of this particular extension but i'll go back to the test mode and i have this get started link i'm starting it in the debug mode so you see i have hit the debug point over here because i have given this particular breakpoint now from here on i can press f10 to go line by line try to inspect each of these things and see if there is a problem with my test itself, the test writing itself, because test also I'm writing with code, right? The automation test cases, I'll be able to fix them very, very quickly, right? So this is also another great feature for folks who are automation testers, who are writing automation using Playwright, you know, their life is much, much simplified with it. So my recommendation would be you definitely install this particular extension if you want to work with Playwright because that is going to make things much, much simpler for you. Now we'll be writing our own test and we'll be running them. But before we do that, I want you to be familiar with few terminologies so that it become easier for you when we write the test. There are more terminologies, there are terminologies beyond the one that you are seeing on your screen. But in the context of this video, this terminology should be enough to learn with. In the future videos, we'll be introduced to few more. Let's start with the simplest, most simplest terminology called test. If you look into any of the spec file, again, I'm looking into the example spec file, where I'm seeing there are two things that we import from playwright slash test. One is test, another is expect. So test and expect. Test is a single unit of your test cases. So for example, here we are testing whether a particular page has a certain title or not. And that is what is our test case. And while running this test case, we will expect certain things to behave in certain way. If it is happening great or it will assert and we will get success or failure result. That's where this expect come into picture. So expect is basically the function through which you express what is your expectation. All right. Then we have something called describe. Usually the test, how it is defined individually, it may not be defined in this way. You might want to group the test for a particular feature. And while you are grouping the test, you have to group using something called describe, which we'll see in a moment. Then we have page itself. In the context of Playwright, there is something called browser context. Browser context provide a way to operate with multiple independent browser sessions, which we have seen with Chromium, WebKit, we have, or Firefox, we were doing it, right? Now for each of those browser contexts, as just now we spoke, we can have multiple pages. 
So a page in Playwright usually refers a single tab of a browser or a pop-up window within the browser and within the browser context, right? That is what is page. So if I go to the spec file over here, you will see like each of the test, apart from a small title of what is this particular test about, we also pass something called a page. And on this page, we can now have multiple methods. For example, there is a method called go to, and it is self-explanatory, right? We are asking it to go to a particular URL and on that URL, if we go, there will be a page open on that particular browser, on that particular browser context, on which we expect it to have a title called this. This is our test case. If this test case pass great, if it is fail, then we will know why exactly it failed. So this is how we define test. And this is how page comes into picture. This is how expect come into picture. This is how this go to come into picture. And this is how some of this conditions that we are putting to test out things are also coming into picture. So if I go to our terminologies till here, we have covered. Then we have certain things called locators. Locators in the sense like you have your page and in your application, there could be multiple pages. Now your user will be moving forward from one page to another page to solve certain use cases that you have implemented. Now to get your user from one page to another page manually is quite easy. Like you will be clicking here, you'll be clicking there and then you will be testing it. But the same thing, if you want to do in an automated way, you have to simulate it. If you want to click on a button, you have to locate on the page where exactly that particular button is. If there is an anchor tag, if you want to click on it, you have to locate it. If there is a text field, you want to write something in the text field and then want to click on a button, you have to locate the text field. You have to perform some operation like writing in the text field. Then you have to locate the button beside it. You have to perform the action of clicking on that button. So for all this locating, you need something called a locator. There are varieties of locators available with Playwright. I have noted down few that we are going to use in this video while writing the test. One is get by role. Get by role uses to locate by explicit or implicit accessibility attributes. Usually these accessibility attributes will be identified with their recognizable name. For example, heading. Get by placeholder. We know like if there is an input element, we can provide a placeholder, especially for the text, text area and all these cases. So we can actually get a particular element by his placeholder. We can locate the element by his placeholder. We can locate the element by text. We can locate the element by any of the CSS specifiers. So we will see some of these examples right away when we start writing the test, but there are more to it. Cover them in the future videos. So now it's time to start writing our test finally. And for that, we will be using this particular website and this website has lot of feature we can bring in for our end-to-end -end testing. We'll be dealing with three test cases, you know, for our examples. Let me just show you those three test cases manually. So that after that, when we start writing the automated test cases using Playwright, you can understand them like what exactly we are doing. So the first test that we will write is when this particular page comes up on that time, we want to check whether this particular page has a particular title or not. If you see at the top of the page, yeah, there is a title called your store. We can check that this web page has this particular title or not. If the title is not having your store, then the test fails. So this is our test number one. All right. Now, test number two is about navigating to one of these menu options that we have in the header. For example, there is an item called special. So if I click on special, I will go to a new page and then there is a continue button. If I click on this, I'll come back to the home page. So this is another test that I want to do. And the third test that I am going to do is about this particular interaction where I have a search bar and here I can type any search keyword, for example, phone I'm searching for and then I will click on this search button. After that, I get a search result in that I click on any of this particular item. I go to the details page. From here, I have two options, add to cart and buy now. I can click on the buy now and then I can go to a page where I have to fill up the details, right? So this is another flow that I want to test with Playwright 
end to end test cases under the e2e folder where we are keeping all our test file let's create a new file give it a name playground.spec.js okay and inside this we will start writing our test now for writing test we need two things one is the test and the expect we have seen it in the example before so we'll import it first so we have imported test and expect from playwright test okay now how we plan to write this test instead of writing individual test and running them we'll group them we'll consider that we are testing the e-commerce playground so inside e-commerce playground we have bunch of tests to run so for that as we have done test we will have something called describe so test dot describe how you describe your test suit so here i can give a string so that i can identify this suit so i'll say testing the e-commerce website so this is the name after this it takes a callback function and now inside this callback function i have to define my individual test so the first test that i am going to run that will be simply test i'll give the test name first test if you remember whether it has certain title or not okay and then here I have to pass a callback function, but it will be an async function. And this async function, automatically, we can pass a page. You remember what is page and the context and all that we have explained before. And over here, I will be writing all my test related item. So for example, first, I have to go to that e-commerce website. So the first thing that I will write is await this page dot go to, and then I give that e-commerce website url where i want to go to after going there what i expect await expect page now here we have all these utility methods to have title and then the title that i am looking for is your store okay so at this stage let me try running this i can run this from here i can run this from here or i can go to this testing i can run this playground over here testing e-commerce i can run this one so let me run this so it's running over here so it has run through and it is saying that the run has passed okay so that means this particular test case has passed in 25 milliseconds and we are seeing this one now let me put this one for all the browsers and also i will click on show browser this time so that i can see all the browsers and let me just run the test once again this time from here i'll run it so i see the browser coming up it is gone to there it found your store the other browser has come up it is going over there great the third browser has come up so on all the browser this test has passed let me close them one by one so we have written our first test all right now let's go towards the second test the second test was about that we will click on that special link then we'll go to the next page where we'll click on the continue button right that's what i have shown so for that the next one again test will give a name say special link and again the syntax is exactly same uh, async function as a callback and inside this we will be writing our test logic all right so our test logic is first again go to this particular page so i'll copy this one and then i have to find out a link which says special hot so i'll go to there it says special hot right so if i do an inspect over here and if you see over here inside this div i'll just get in inside this so there is a special hot right so with this one i can locate now that particular link and then from that link I can actually get the element out and then pretend a click on it and then go to the next page and there again on the other button continue button I can do a click right so that is what I'm going to do so for that let me go to VS code again and here I want to introduce you to the locator so the locator that I'm going to use right now it's called get by role okay get by role again with the accessibility identifier we can pull the element so for example for us it is link correct the anchor is a link so you can say await page dot get by role name is link and then we have to give the qualifier so that it matches the qualified is name colon the name is special hot special hot s is capital yeah special hot and we can give other few filter specifier like exact matches true and then on top of that i will do a click so now it will automate the click on that special hot link after that it will go to the next page where the continue is there so similar to this one i'll just copy this link 
here i can give this particular name as continue okay here it is dot not comma dot yeah now it looks like the test is almost there so let me go ahead and run this test from here so i'm running this test it's coming up special link should be clicked now after this is loaded it's waiting is executed oh, yeah it's gone there and come back have you seen that next one also you'll see in the next browser just try to see it first it has come now it will go to this continue yeah come back now the third one also will come it will come to the next page i expect that to come uh, yeah now continue okay so our second test also ran and it is passed now the third test the third test was about the search here we'll be able to type something and able to simulate the click action go to the next page click on the buy then go to the form page till there right so let's go ahead and write that as well so for that i will do the test again and give the test name as search products and buy and as usual it is going to take this callback async callback and inside this we have to write our stuff so the first thing is to go to this all right then i have to locate that particular search bar so there are multiple ways i can locate it if you see there are multiple ways i can go i can do it by its id with a css locator i can do it again with the by role but as it is having a placeholder say search for products let me do it by the placeholder this time so that so that i can show you that particular usage as well right so what i'll do next i'll do abate page dot get by placeholder here i have to give the placeholder name which is search for products now one more thing that i want to show you over here if i go to f12 and search for this and over here i do control f and do search for products so if you see search for products are coming twice in this page if you see this see that there, there are two times that it is coming it is because there is a mobile version of this page also like when it shrinks the search goes somewhere inside there is a mobile version also it is there twice so what we have to do if we just give search for products as a placeholder there will be two elements that will be picked up and our uh, playwright will throw an error because playwright by default run in strict mode and if you have two elements matching one of your locator then it is confused like which one to act on so what we'll do is like after you know locating by search for products we will get two elements right in that we will apply it in the onto the first one which is this one so i wanted to showcase this scenario like you might encounter this kind of scenario as well that's why you know wanted to show you this so search for products this particular get by placeholder might return you two elements but you want to act on the first one so i'm taking the first one like this and then i want to first click on it so that it gets the focus done now after clicking on it i want to fill it with some kind of text so i will just copy this so i am again on that particular text box alone then i will do fill and here i will give the text let me give a text call phone maybe phone yes so so far i'll be having the focus on the search field and it will have the text call phone next thing is i have to locate the button which is having the name search beside it right so for that now you know how it will be it's pretty easy what i did now get by role a button whose name is search and i'll click on it now till here if the click happen it means that it will go to the next page so let me go to the website once and i will do phone and then i click on search so now i am in this page in this page there are multiple items that i can see right multiple items i want to simulate the click on any of this item now if i want to simulate the click on any of this item i have to pick up that item isn't it so for that again if i try to see like what will be my locator i can see over here that there is a div called product thumb you see this so i can actually take this one as a locator class locator called product thumb but the problem is this product thumb is there on each of this each of this product so naturally if i do the product thumb as a locator it is going to send me an array of dom element for each of this product items now if i get that array of dom element what i can do definitely i can pick up the first one second one third one whatever i want so it means if i can combine this class selector with the nth function of playwright 
where I can pass is like which particular element in that array that I am interested in. So what I can do is a code here. I can do like I will copy this much so that I don't have to write again. Await page dot. Now I'll be using something called locator. In future videos, we'll get much more deeper about locator but it is similar to all other locators but this, this works directly on css and all the selector the locator that we showed just now is called product thumb product hyphen thumb this is a css locator so of course it will have a dot in front of it now so far it is going to give me an array because there are so many products having the same css now on top of this what we can do we can do n n t h n th and we want the second one and on top of that we want to do the click so this is the trick okay now once we do this click it will go to the next page where we have a button called buy now so that button also we want to simulate the click so it will be like await page by get role get the button the button name is buy now and on top of that you simulate this click okay so this is what my test code look like so see this one first i'll go to that link then I search the text box by its placeholder, put a focus on it, fill it with the term phone. Then I find the search button. I simulate a click on it. When I go to the next page, I get in one of the product using the product thumb and the nth child. And then on that, I do a click. Once you go to the next page, I find there is a button called buy now. I click on it so that I go to the buy now page. So let me run this and see whether it works or it fails. I'm running it. All right. So Chrome started. It will come here. Call phone. In a moment, yeah, phone has come. You can see this. Now search has clicked. It went to the next page. Then it comes to buy now. And it has come to buy now page. Great. Let's see over here. Another browser phone. Search. Next page. Buy now. Buy now has come. Third browser. Awesome. Now phone. It will be search. It has come over here by now and yeah so you see all three browsers it worked so it means that all three of the tests that we have written are working now what we'll do we'll go over here in the test tab experimental i am just collapsing in the playground in the test wood level i'm just going to run all of them together okay so playground spec testing this one testing the e-commerce website let me run one you know all of them together one by one so it has come the first test is about checking this done now the second one is going to special link it has come to special come back to the home again then the third one is writing about the phone going over here second one buy now and come to buy now page done on the other environment again the same thing you can also observe the time that each of these tests taking, you know, coming over here. All right, is the search one the last one going on? It will go till the buy now. Awesome. Okay, now the third one or third environment kicking off. Cool. Awesome. Is going on. Okay, the last test is going on. Phone, search, go to the page, and then from here it should go to buy now. Click on buy now. Yes, it has come to the page. All the tests are done. We have ran them successfully so i hope this is something that you enjoy writing the test and running now this all we have done locally but there would be situation where you might want to run all of this test on cloud why i'll come to that and before i run them on cloud there is one more very vital thing that i want to teach you the power of visual studio code extension of playwright is you not only can run the test that you write but you can actually write your test by recording the action on a web page you want to learn that let's do that the visual studio code extension having another feature called record now or record at cursor now what it records it records your activity on a browser and as you perform that activity it start creating the test automatically for you awesome right for anybody so when you're doing manual testing for the first time you can put it on it is automatically going to write the automation test cases for you that you can run later point in time let's do that right once quick so i'll say record new so it open up a browser also you can see that it created a new spec file for me a new test for me and the recording is happening here so now i'll go to the same e-commerce website i'll click enter see the page dot go to has appeared automatically i have not written it now let me perform few actions over here all right 
so let me go to my account and then give some email address if you observe the background the code is going on something and then perform login okay now i'll close this guy my recording is done i'll close it do you see this one how amazing it is go to this page go to button click on my account then email address go to that field filled with this value then go to password filled with this value then click on the login awesome right so this is how you can keep generating your test and then at any point of time similarly you can run it now if i run this one over here the same test will run see i'll come over there then my account came here you saw this same test has run awesome so this is how you can do this now what we'll do we will talk about testing on cloud testing needs environments right so far in locally we could run things on say webkit firefox chromium all this environment but your users might be using much more different kind of environments they may be on ios they may be on android or they may be on certain resolutions maybe on certain kind of orientation and sometimes it is practically impossible to have all these expenses under your cover and then try to test everything and your team is testing on all this environment now as there could be a limitation of getting all these environments together that's where the testing on cloud basically comes into picture and here i want to introduce you to lambda test and want to plug in this playwright thing whatever we have seen so far on lambda tests scalable cloud-based cross-browser testing platform so on this platform the best part is you can ensure testing your web applications written in say javascript css html and then you seamlessly test them with thousands of combinations possible whether it is on desktop or mobile and you can run the test like playwright test you can run the selenium test cypress test all these things that you can do you can run all your automations over there your web automations all these things you can do so let us now start doing certain configurations in our code so that we should be able to run the similar tests that we have seen locally on lambda test itself for our example i don't have windows 11 i am running this test locally on mac now i don't have windows 11 i don't have this box at all so it's a great use case for me to use lambda test and run the same test on windows 11 environment so let's do that now to do that i have to do few configuration first on lambda test side and then we'll be going to the code and start doing the configuration on the code side as well so if you don't have a lambda test account you can create an account and then go to your dashboard once you come to your dashboard you can go to account settings click on password and security here two things are very important one is your username another is your access key so you have to copy your username you can click on this button to copy your username similarly you can click on this one to copy your access key if you don't have access key generated please generate a new access key so you have username and access key in handy now you go back to your code at the root of the project create a file called env in this file we'll be creating and keeping some environment variables the two environment variables we need is that username and access key that you have copied so let's create them create them with lt underscore username that equals to the username that you had copied and then lt underscore access underscore key equals to the access key that you had copied after you have done this you don't have to come to this file again so you can just close this and make sure that if you have a git ignore you always put an entry of dot env because by accident also you don't want to check in this env file to your version control system now what we have to do we have to access these keys that we have created over there and we have to access them into some configuration file for that purpose we have to install one more package called dot env so that we can access the environment variable values from the dot env file that we have done just now so for that let us go to the terminal here on the terminal you do npm install dot env so dot env got installed we can see it over here after this we have to create a special configuration file for lambda test that is where we will bring playwright and lambda test together so again at the root of the project folder let's create a new file let's give it a name called playwright hyphen lambda test dot js you can give any name of your choice doesn't matter and over here we are going to do some kind of integration between lambda test and 
the playwright. We'll be accessing that environment variables from the .env file to here. For example, I need the access key. I need my, you know, the username and all. So as we have installed .env, the first thing that we are going to do is to require .env.config so that we load all the environment variables over here. All right. Then we would need two packages from Playwright. One is the Chromium, another is Expect. Expect you already know you are aware because we have used them. So let's take Chromium and let's take Expect that we have already imported over here. Now we are going to do some configurations, right? So those configurations that we want to do over here. So the first configuration is about the capabilities. What are the capabilities we are defining so that based on those capabilities, our test will run on Lambda test. So for example, we have defined like we will be using a browser called Chrome browser or browser name. Of course, the latest browser version and what are the other Lambda test options we are taking over here. The platform, as I told some time back, that will be using Windows 11. The build name, you can give anything. I have given Playwright Lambda test build. You can give anything. Name also is up to you. And this is where you should see. The user, I have process.env.lt underscore username. That is the key I have given in the .env file. Similarly, access key is process.env.lt underscore access key. All right. And then network video console true 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 means when this test has run and we go to Lambda test for analysis of this particular test result, we'll be able to inspect the network tab. We'll be able to see the video recorded for this test. We will be able to see the console tab as well so that we can do the stuff right so this is our capabilities after defining the capabilities the next thing that we need to get is the browser because from browser we can get the page right that's browser context on the page that is what we have learned in the playwright so same thing we have to do for that we have to first get the browser now to get the browser we had imported this chromium now from this chromium we are doing chromium.connect and here we are giving this browser endpoint and giving this URL. This is the URL you have to use. This is, a, this is from Lambda test and the structure of it. So I get the browser. Now, as I get the browser from browser, I can get the page. So from browser, I'll get the page. Now, as I have the page, the rest of the piece, you know, as I have the page. So from page, I can go to page.go to, right? So now it will go to the my e-commerce website and then I can basically copy paste some of my test. I'll put a try catch and inside the try, let me copy paste some of my older test. So this test, you know, await, expect page to have the title, await page, get place by placeholder, that particular text box. You remember just now we have ran locally. So same text, then write the phone, then click on the search button, go to one of the product, click on the buy now. That's it, right? Now, if this is successful, then we will mark the test as done. That's what we're saying. The Lambda test action, mark the status as done. Okay, it is passed and we're giving a remark, okay? phone products searched. Okay, you can give any name. In case it is failed, we can say that phone products search has failed. And then finally, after doing all this thing, we can close the browser. So this is our script. Now there is one problem. Somebody has to run this script. Who will run this script? One way we can do is like we can put everything is in a function and then the call the function from somewhere. But instead of doing that, we can actually use a IIFE. IIFE means, you know, that in immediately invocable function. So everything, the all the code that we have written so far, we can now put them inside an IIFE. So here I have created an IIFE. If you see that it is getting closed over here, we have the parenthesis so that immediately it gets executed. So rest of the code is as it is as we have written. So this is our playwright lambda test.js file. This is the only thing that you need. Now after this, you will go to terminal again. And here you will say node, give this particular file name playwright hyphen lambda test.js and run. So let it run. It will take some time. It is running this particular file. I hope the run gets completed sooner. So in the meantime, I'll go to the lambda test browser and i'll come over here i'll come to automation and as you see a few seconds ago this is done now if i go back to my vs code once more i have seen that this has ended this is done so it means this test has run successfully so as i come here i see this created over here see playwright lambda test it is has passed a few seconds ago just now now, if I go inside that, I can inspect things further. Okay. You are seeing a lot of stuff. Let's see them one by one. 
First, these are all the commands that run on the test. Browser session started, is initialized, new browser context, got a new page, navigated to my e-commerce URL. Let me just make it a little bigger and yeah, navigated to the e-commerce one. Then it expected something, then click on it. It filled the text box, again click on it. Had a bunch of click here, it is getting that product thumb. You are able to see that, right? So all these things that it has done and we had enabled few things like the network tab logs and all so if we had any log it will appear over here you see over here if it is a network tab it will see like all these things that it has it has fetched so all the things all the network call on that particular e-commerce website while executing the test you are able to see over here there are certain metadata information as well you know you can see over here all right now another special thing this particular video so this video okay let me try to make it little bigger so take a look into this video when i play this is going to show the exact thing that we have performed so this opening is going there it will write the word there you know then click on the search go to the next page yeah click on buy now and that's it right this is how the things had happened and if you see it is like windows 11 on this particular browser this is what we had configured for which is awesome and in case you find some issues you can actually go ahead and create an issue from here you can create different kind of integration points from the lambda test for example you can create slack jira you know all this kind of integration point you can create and you can post your stuff or you can create the issue directly from here if you find an issue so there are a lot of stuff that you can do you know after the fact of writing your test and the test become part or test become failed right so whatever we had run locally i could do the same thing on an environment that is not present with me locally for example windows 11 i have taken the help of lambda test and ran that on the cloud on that particular environment using playwright in two end test cases if i want i can run this on android i can run it on ios i can run it on any other environment which i may not have at this point of time all the code that we have used and written in this video is there on the github and the github link is mentioned in the description of this video so you can check it out and start using it as you find it so if you reach this far thank you very much for learning playwright and understanding all the aspects of it that we have covered in this video before we say bye i want to get you in touch with a few important links First thing is the Lambda Test community. The link is over here and you can also find this in the description of this video. You can go there and join the community. If you have any questions, if you have queries, you can post them. Also can learn from all other discussions going on over there. You must look out for Lambda Test certifications. And if you are interested, you can know all about the certifications by following the link that is given. And last but not the least, there are varieties of other projects and the source codes that you can find out and can play around. It might be of your interest. So you can also check out Lambda Test GitHub repositories as well. All right. Take a great care of yourself. We'll be back again with another insightful video very soon.